Hi everyone, my name is Erin Dahl and I am the Senior Nutrition Education Specialist at Natural Grocers and I am here to welcome you to our virtual nutrition education class series. So this week we're going to be talking about the foundations for building a healthy meal in our class Super Simple Ways to Eat Well. And today's presentation will be led by Jessica Cox who is one of our very own nutritional health coach experts and she is at our Oklahoma City, Oklahoma North May location. She received her bachelor's degree in nutritional sciences from Oklahoma State University, and she is also an integrative and functional nutrition certified practitioner through IFN Academy. Jessica, thanks again for being here today. Please go ahead and take it away. Thanks, Erin. I appreciate that. Okay. Today's class is on super simple ways to eat well. I think this is a wonderful class to have, especially in the new year, because eating healthy really does not have to be hard. In some ways, eating healthy has been made to be very complicated when it really doesn't have to be. So today we're gonna go back to the basics and talk about really just the principles of healthy eating. It is only when we provide our body with the nutrients it needs that we can achieve optimal health truly. So keep that in mind as we talk about building healthy meals today. This class is not intended to diagnose, treat, or mitigate any disease or illness, and dietary supplements and foods can interact with prescription medication. So if you are taking a prescription medication, always become informed about the possible interactions before you make any changes. Everything we do here at Natural Grocers goes back to our five founding principles. The first being nutrition education. So we are more than a health food store. We are a nutrition education center. We have credentialed nutritional health coaches at every store to keep you educated through virtual classes and even virtual one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions. We are extremely dedicated to the quality of our products. We have a thorough screening and approval process for every product that goes on our shelves. We even have a nine or 10 page document called Things We Won't Carry and Why. That talks about all the ingredients we keep off of our shelves just by shopping with us. So examples of that would be factory farmed animal products, conventional produce. We only carry 100% USDA organic produce. We are committed to everyday affordable pricing. We have our in-power savings program that is free to all customers, and you really can't beat our $1.99 deal on free range eggs for our members. That's a, definitely a customer favorite. We are dedicated to our local communities. We are a bagless store, but anytime you bring back your own bags, we donate five cents to the local food banks, which is very important this year. Last but not least, we are dedicated to our employees. Natural Grocers provides us great pay, excellent benefits, and they have been very supportive in 2020 during the pandemic that we are experiencing. So today we are going to learn some basic eating principles that will help balance your blood sugar. Because balancing blood sugar really is the foundation of health for everyone, no matter your age, your health status, your choice of diet, whether you're vegan, omnivore, what have you, balancing your blood sugar is one of the most important things you can do for your health. We are going to use these basic eating principles and learn how to build our meals. So the graphic that you see on this slide is called our healthy meal wheel. This is something we use in our store, all of our classes, everything. You can have a colored copy if you visit with your NHC at your local store. But this is how we like to build our meals at every meal. So I am going to teach you the components of the healthy meal wheel. So since healthy blood sugar is the one of the most important things you can do for your health, Let's talk about blood sugar. What actually is blood sugar anyway? Blood sugar or glucose is the sugar that circulates around in your blood. It comes from carbohydrates, namely starches and sugars from our diets. And it's one of our body's main sources of fuel. Most of what our cells don't take up for cellular energy is actually stored as fat. 
Our blood sugar balance is so important and very tightly regulated, so much that the body maintains less than three quarters of a teaspoon of glucose in the bloodstream at all times. Let's take a look on this next slide of what happens with our blood sugar levels when we eat a typical American breakfast. So a typical American breakfast, for example, contains something like cold cereal, which usually has a lot of starch and sugar, skim milk, which is stripped of fat, and you're left with lactose sugar, maybe a little protein, orange juice, has all of the sugar taken out of the oranges and none of the fiber left over. Coffee, what do most people put in their coffee? Usually some sort of sugar. Or some people just drink coffee for breakfast only and just go from there. This is an example of a standard American breakfast within the standard American diet, the SAD diet. It is not a coincidence that it's SAD for short. So this type of meal is a very unbalanced meal because it, it is very high in starches and sugars, and it's also very low in things like fiber, protein, healthy fats. All of the nutrients that are needed to maintain healthy blood sugar are lacking in this meal. And what happens when we eat meals like this is our blood sugar spikes out of the normal range. That green area is the normal range that our blood sugar is meant to stay in. And when our blood sugar spikes, it's a very stressful thing on our body. We have a hormone called insulin that is released from our pancreas to bring that blood sugar back down, get that glucose into our cells and out of the circulation. High blood sugar is not only stressful, but it can be harmful. So insulin goes in and does its job very quickly, so quickly that we have a crash in blood sugar. When we have a crash in blood sugar or low blood sugar, it is also stressful on the body. We can have an increase in our hormone cortisol, our stress hormone. The reason why cortisol can increase is because low blood sugar is so stressful that we must bring our blood sugar back up in order to continue being alive, essentially. So blood sugar dysregulation is like an emergency system or an emergency situation in our body. So cortisol is that emergency stress hormone. When our blood sugar crashes, we also have an increase in cravings. We have fatigue, we have brain fog. In my house, we call it hangry. We have hangry symptoms. When our blood sugar crashes, we are having those cravings, but do you think we crave some nice salmon and buttered broccoli when our blood sugar crashes? Not even close. This is when we are running at top speed to the vending machine and getting a Reese's or some cookies or chips, something like that that's very high in sugar and carbs to bring our blood sugar back up. So whether cortisol brings our blood sugar back up or whether our high sugar, high carb snack brings it back up, we end up with another spike in blood sugar. And this constant spiking and crashing situation not only stresses our body very severely, uh, it provides us with biochemical stress, but it puts us in fat storage mode. When we have chronically elevated insulin, you can also think of insulin as our fat storage hormone. When insulin is too high too long, our body can't access our fat stores to use those as energy. So we are on this constant up and down roller coaster. We're hungry between meals. We're tired. We're putting on weight. We're stressed. All because we're eating unbalanced meals. It's really easy to get on this blood sugar roller coaster. But we can get off of it if we eat healthy, balanced meals. So on the contrary, let's look at a balanced breakfast. This example contains two whole eggs, which, is high, which are high in protein, healthy fat, lots of micronutrients, a cup of spinach and a half cup of berries, so fruits and vegetables, your ideal sources of carbs, very high in vitamins, minerals, and fiber. And then even one to two ounces of good quality cheese, some more fat, and protein in there for you. And then herbal or green tea instead of coffee. So we don't have a huge caffeine 
dump into our system. This type of meal has quality protein, healthy fat, and fiber, and is very nutrient dense. Protein, fat, and fiber are slow digesting nutrients that help sugars in our meal release slower into our bloodstream. So as you can see on this slide, our blood sugar levels stay in the green section in the normal range. Our, we, our brain is having a steady supply, supply of glucose for fuel that it needs. And we're feeling great. We're not having cravings. We're able to think clearly. We have energy. We're, we are able to thrive until our next meal. So how do we know if we're on the blood sugar roller coaster? Well, listen to your body. If I could just state one thing that is so important, it's listening to your body. So after one to two hours, are you still feeling good? Are you still full? Are you able to concentrate? Or are you hungry, having cravings? Do you feel tired or irritable? If your meal is properly balanced, you should be satisfied for a full three to four hours after you eat your meal. And timing is really key too. Whenever I meet with people one-on-one -on -one for virtual coaching with natural grocers, if they're craving sugar throughout the day or at night, I always ask them, how long after waking up do you eat breakfast in the morning? In addition to what are they eating, when are you eating it? How long do you go without eating in between your meals? Are you going three to four hours or are you going all day? Timing is really key as well as be building your meal to be as balanced as possible. So once you've identified if you are on the roller coaster, the next step is to get off of the roller coaster. So eating real food, high quality whole foods, the way nature intended, building those balanced and healthy meals, taking your individual nutritional needs into account, which meeting with a nutritional health coach at Natural Grocers is one of the most important things you can do to really individualize your meals and your supplement regimen. And then experiment. So more healthy fats or maybe less starch or maybe you need more protein at a meal. No two individuals are exactly the same. I can't you know, state that enough. One person may need more carbs, one person may need less carbs. I'll give you an example. Say you're, you're very fit and active and you run marathons and your husband needs to lose weight. Well, your meal is going to look much different than your husband's naturally. So let's take a look at the healthy meal wheel and what makes up this healthy meal wheel. And then we're gonna go through each section of the healthy meal wheel and talk about how to, or why that's important. So first, build your meals around nutrient-dense vegetables. So these are your non-starchy vegetables. You really can't get too many non-starchy vegetables. So half your plate is what we aim for at every meal. Next, you wanna choose a quality protein source. Of course, the healthy fats and then fruit and maybe some starchy vegetables for carbohydrates. Every meal should be based on vegetables. So let's talk about that. Vegetables provide an ideal carbohydrate source, many antioxidants, vitamins, minerals, both types of fiber. So some of the best sources of fiber, the highest fiber, fiber vegetables out there, are collard greens, turnip greens, squash, broccoli, spinach, Brussels sprouts, green beans, cabbages, asparagus, you name it. Those are all very high fiber, great choices for vegetables. Not only great choices, but tasty. These non-starchy vegetables can really help fill you up for a very small amount of calories. I probably don't have to try to convince you that you need to eat vegetables to be healthy, but it is very important to note because most people do not get enough vegetables in their diets. Next, we have quality protein. So quality proteins are ones that contain all of the essential amino acids and the ratios required by our bodies. The best sources are properly raised animal products, whether it's meats or seafoods, eggs or cheese or any dairy product, maybe even some Greek yogurt. So proteins are part of every cell, tissue, and fluid in our bodies. They're made from amino acids, and you can think of amino acids as like building blocks of your body. So there are 20 different amino acids that your body use, uses to make its proteins. 
the essential amino acids are the ones that our bodies cannot make. We have to get them from our diet. So they are the most important to get from our food. And almost all animal products represent complete sources of quality protein, providing us with those essential amino acids that we cannot make ourselves. When you choose animal protein, the most important thing is choosing animal products from naturally raised sources. So I think we've all heard here and there that red meat causes inflammation, quote unquote. So if it's factory farmed red meat, that is absolutely correct. So just to kind of go over some basics, omega-6 fatty acids are very inflammatory. And on the contrary, omega-3 fatty acids modulate inflammation in the body. So the more omega-6 we get versus three, the more inflamed our body is going to be. An ideal ratio of omega-6 to three in our bodies is one to one. When we eat beef from grass-fed cows, the omega-6 to omega-3 profile is about 2 to 1.7, which is very close to that ideal ratio for healthy inflammation in the body. When we choose factory farmed or conventionally raised beef, those cows are fed a diet high in omega-6 rich grains and soy. And the ratio is more like 23 to almost 2. So about almost 12 times more omega-6 than in grass-fed cows. So no wonder factory farmed beef, no wonder beef has earned this reputation for being inflammatory because most beef on the market is that conventionally raised factory farmed meat. So if we choose high quality beef, for example, like Thousand Hills beef, the only one that we sell, it's only $5.89 a pound for members, which is a great deal. And it's 100% grass fed, pasture raised, regenerative agriculture, great for the planet, better for you, better for your body. Also more nutrient dense. So zinc, CoQ10, L-carnitine, even vitamin A and vitamin E are all higher in grass fed beef than conventional beef. One last nutrient that grass fed beef is higher in is called CLA. This is a fatty acid that is known to support a healthy body composition, even healthy muscle mass and immune system function. It is much higher in grass fed beef than conventional. So you need a protein at every single meal. You wanna start with a palm sized portion is a great place to start. And including protein in your snacks is important as well, especially when you get that afternoon slump. Protein helps balance your blood sugar. It helps keep you full. And again, it provides you with those building blocks called amino acids. When customers also, as a side note, whenever I see customers one-on-one -on -one in my coaching sessions, when they have sugar cravings, Typically, they aren't eating enough protein or they're not eating enough protein earlier in the day. I see that pretty often. So definitely go to our website and request a nutrition coaching session with your local NHC or nutritional health coach. We call them NHCs for short. And definitely work with them and see how much protein in a day is appropriate for you. Lastly, protein for vegetarians. So pro vegetarians usually don't have trouble getting enough protein. It's just that we have to be careful with our sources. So one example is quinoa. Quinoa is a great healthy food, but it is mostly starch. So it is a complete protein, but it's just that it's packaged with the starch. So you have to be careful about blood sugar balance and not overdoing it. Next is soy. So about 94% of all soy grown in the U.S. is genetically modified to be Roundup ready. So you really have to make sure to not overdo soy and really choose non-GMO or certified organic soy. My personal favorite complete proteins for vegetarians are hemp seeds and nutritional yeast. Hemp seeds are very nutrient dense. They are high in healthy fats and fiber, and then they are a complete protein. You can add them to your food. You can add them to a shake. They're really versatile. And then nutritional yeast is great, especially for people that are dairy-free because it has a nice cheesy flavor. I really like the brand Parma, P-A-R-M-A, that we sell in our stores. The plain one is great. It even has some seeds blended in with it, and they have one that is a garlicky flavor of nutritional yeast, and you can just put it all over your food. It's really tasty. 
So now that we have half of our plate filled with vegetables and we have a serving of good quality protein, let's talk about fat because this is where people tend to get the most confused. So really don't fear fats. Fats are absolutely necessary on a cellular level. The fats we consume go on to make our cell membranes. All of our trillions of cells in our body have a cell membrane and they are made of fat. Fats also supply us with energy. They are the building blocks of hormones. They help us stay full for longer. They're very satisfying. They balance our blood sugar. And they also carry fat soluble. So vitamins A, D, E, and K are all fat soluble nutrients. So we need fat to absorb them. We do need all three types of fats as well. We need the monounsaturated fats like our avocados, our nuts, olive oil. We need polyunsaturated fats like we get from seeds or wild caught fish. We also need saturated fats like we get from coconut oil, grass fed butter or ghee, or even unrefined organic red palm oil, which is a great alternative to coconut oil if you don't like that coconut taste. Despite what we've been told since like 1977-ish, saturated fats do have many benefits. Saturated fats raise HDL or quote unquote good cholesterol. And saturated fatty acids, for example, stearic acid and palmitic acid are preferred fuel for the heart. Lauric acid, which is found in coconut oil, is very supportive of the immune system. And our brains, so our brains are 60 to 70 percent fat and 25 percent cholesterol. So a diet that is low in fat does not support brain health. So you can see on this slide lots of examples of good healthy fats to include at every single meal. The next section of the healthy meal wheel is the optional additional carbohydrate section. Keep in mind this is optional. So if you exercise frequently, you're very athletic, you can include this. You really want to focus on starchy vegetables like beets or sweet potatoes, white potatoes, butternut squash and other winter squashes because they are the most nutrient dense sources of these starches. Greens can really spike blood sugar and they're not nearly as nutrient dense. So you wanna focus on those starchy vegetables. And if you are going to include grains, make sure you include them in their whole form. So like brown rice or quinoa, even steel cut oats, rather than things like breads and pastas. So really choosing the whole forms and choosing the nutrient dense starches over the less nutrient dense ones like grains. You can also include things like beans and lentils as well, but again, they aren't quite as nutrient dense as your starchy vegetables. Last but not least, my, maybe my favorite part of a healthy meal, nature's perfect tree in the form of fruit. So fruit is really a great food to eat, especially if you have blood, or excuse me, if you have sugar cravings, because it can kind of satisfy that sweet tooth, but it's also very nutrient dense. So it's an ideal source of carbohydrates as well. It's very high in antioxidants, vitamins and minerals, and very rich in both types of fiber, your soluble and insoluble fiber. One of my favorite ways to get more fiber that I recommend to customers, one cup of raspberries a day, that's eight grams of fiber right there. Pears, cranberries, strawberries, apples, blueberries, and oranges are all very fiber rich fruits as well. Now that we have covered all of the parts of our healthy meal wheel, let's look at how to put it all together and to create a healthy and delicious meal. So we're going to start with a protein rich breakfast and we're going to experiment to find our best meals and snacks for blood sugar balance. We're going to listen to our body. We're, we need to be full for three to four hours after we've eaten a meal. So if we're getting hungry within one to two hours, that's a good sign that we need to adjust utilizing all of our resources and getting additional support from our nutritional health coaches. So I just wanted to stop and say, if you go to naturalgrocers.com, you're gonna click on nutrition center and then click on nutritional health coaches. And then you click request a coaching session and choose the NHC closest to you. And you can schedule a complimentary appointment and you can do it on Teams or you can do it over the phone. 
One of the most important things of eating healthy is to really spend time uh, with planning your meals. So failing to plan is really planning to fail. So write out your breakfast, lunches, and dinners. Keep the meal wheel in mind and make a shopping list from your meal plan. And make sure, my favorite thing to note, don't go to the store hungry because you're going to be the new proud owner of aisle four. So keep it simple and don't forget to make it delicious. I like to say, don't keep it so simple that you go to work with your lunch packed and then at lunchtime, you're not looking forward to eating it because it's so plain. But also don't make it so complicated that once you get home from the grocery store, you don't want to prepare it because it's just so complex. So keep it kind of in the middle. One thing I also like to recommend is using our health hotline magazine when you're planning your meals so that you can plan to use ingredients that are going on sale at your local natural grocer so you can really save money and make it more affordable. Now, thank you so much for listening to this class today. I hope you are better equipped to make healthy choices and make your food just healthier but still delicious. And don't forget to enjoy your food. Thank you. Thank you, Jessica. That was so awesome. Um, we really appreciate you being here today. And I think it's safe to say we learned a lot from you today. And before we end, just a reminder that in addition to offering classes like these, our nutritional health coaches are also available for free virtual coaching sessions. So these hour long sessions are a great resource for those of you who are looking for additional support and also tailored nutrition recommendations. So for more information on natural grocers or to request a virtual coaching session, you can just visit us um, at naturalgrocers.com. So thank you again for joining us today and we hope to see you again soon for another virtual nutrition education class.